I'm Craig Summers, naturopath and nutritionist. Our topic, spirulina. Spirulina is a blue-green algae that occurs naturally in freshwater lakes in tropical and subtropical areas. Let's take a look at why so many people like to consume spirulina and why all spirulina products are not of equal quality. In 1974, the World Health Organization described spirulina as, quote, an interesting food for multiple reasons, rich in iron and protein, and able to be administered to children without any risk, unquote. They called it, quote, a very suitable food, unquote. Back in the late 1980s and early 90s, both NASA and the European Space Agency stated that spirulina should be one of the primary foods to be cultivated during long-term space missions. In 2003, the United Nations established the Intergovernmental Institution for the Use of Microalgae Spirulina against malnutrition. Spirulina was a food source for the Aztecs in Mexico from the 14th to the 16th century. They harvested spirulina from Lake Texacoco as noted by one of Cortez's soldiers. There are different varieties of spirulina available. Spirulina platensis, and spirulina maxima are the most common. Platensis occurs in Africa, Asia, and South America. Maxima is found in Central America, and spirulina pacifica is endemic to the Hawaiian Islands. Dried spirulina is extremely protein rich and contains approximately 60% protein. It has an easily digestible complete protein containing all essential amino acids. The protein in spirulina is superior to most plant proteins, such as that from legumes. Spirulina is an excellent source of beta carotene, perhaps 10 times more concentrated than that of carrots. It is also an excellent source of many B vitamins, including thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. Spirulina contains ample amounts of many essential minerals such as iron, potassium, manganese, and magnesium. Spirulina's lipid profile is also impressive. It contains about 8% lipids by weight, and its awesome array is made up of GLA, ALA, LA, SDA, EPA, DHA, and AA. The largest commercial producers of spirulina are located in the USA, Thailand, India, Taiwan, China, Pakistan, Burma, Greece, and Chile but it's also being grown on a smaller scale in many places around the globe. There is a huge difference in quality between the different growers and harvesters. For example, spirulina is being grown in India and China where there are few regulations on pesticides and the use of irradiation. Heavy metal pollution is also of concern in many countries. Spirulina grown in and around cities may be contaminated with pollution common to cities. For example, Bangkok, Thailand is a polluted city, yet someone decided that a good place to grow spirulina is on a rooftop inside the city. Some spirulina is being harvested out of polluted lakes. In many developing countries, Natural water sources are also used to bathe 
and may contain sewage. Numerous studies have been conducted on spirulina. A study published in April 2016 concluded, Spirulina platensis is a good source of antioxidant peptides. A groundbreaking study also published in April 2016 concluded that spirulina extract inhibited viral replication and reduced virus-induced mortality in a broad range of influenza viruses. And another study published in May 2016 found that spirulina platensis has anti-inflammatory properties. I choose to take only the highest quality spirulina grown at almost 9,000 feet above sea level in the Andes Mountains. At that pristine elevation, Andes spirulina is fed minerals from pure glacial water. Being grown at such a high elevation, the algae receives more photon energy from the sun, resulting in a more vibrant product. Andes spirulina is dried at low temperature to preserve nutrients.